Yeah, I keep mentioning how uh, I've, I've been so hesitant to make like permanent changes to my stream setup. Because I know I'm going to have to change it again. So it's like, I want it to be good enough for now. If there's, if I can fuck with my mic to make it a little better. Which actually, we bump the gain a little bit. But yeah, I, it will eventually be better. It's just like, I'm... I'm in a weird space where it's like, I feel like I'm in a transient situation and I don't know how long it's going to be like that yet, but I will soon. And I want to be less cryptic about it, but I can't yet. So instead, I'm simply going to pick up the chainsaw. I wonder if there's one instance of that exact van per overworld map. I think in the first half of Silent Hill 2, once we first get to town, there's one by the key. I think there's another one somewhere nearby. What if Eddie just keeps, like, driving his van, following us around? We're our cryptid, though. I do my best. I should stalk around in the night more often. I'm too tall though, I don't want to freak people out, I just want to... Not like, not, not in a terrifying way, just in a creepy way. I should do a travel blog? I do not travel enough for that. <laughs> I actually don't really travel much at all. Um, Like, I, I go to cons and stuff, but that doesn't really feel like traveling. And it's something I will fix eventually. Just not yet. I mean, COVID kind of shut that down for a while. It still shut it down for a while. I'm definitely not flying anywhere, like, probably for the rest of the year. Eventually, hopefully, shit will just settle down. I do want to just, like, go to random places just to do random shit. There's this, like, furry obsession where, like... I know people who, like, literally just don't do social events unless there will be fursuiting there and shit like that. Or, like, won't travel unless it's to a con and it's like, um... I want to go places, like, to do actual things, <laughs> you know? But that's later. That is not... Soon. Dude, flight prices are fucked. I'm, I'm so not, like, gonna be worrying about that anytime soon. I wonder if I lose stamina faster if I have the chainsaw out. <laughs> Wouldn't you like to know? We're being cryptid, cryptic about our crypticness. Code's been forgotten. See, like... I would only say it's been forgotten here in the sense that no one cares anymore. Like, everyone just kind of gave up. Which, it's not, like... The... The existing... Like... Strains that are going around aren't as bad, but it's like... It's also just that, like... Everyone... No one cares anymore, it's over. Even people who I always knew to be, like, super freaking out about it. Like, even as uh, as it became, like, less of a, 
like it's less lethal, you know, it's it's still spreading and mutating, but like it's not sending anyone to the hospital anymore. And but like even then, like people I knew who were like freaking the fuck out about it and like just going ape shit over like masking rules and stuff are still being super irresponsible. But it's also easy now to just, like, blame, you know, your workplace or, you know, just, I don't know, everyone else. Like, oh, the masking rules are all gone, so I'm just not doing it anymore. You know, it's like, I'm, I'm going to parties all the time and, like, doing whatever the fuck I want, but it's not the same as the people who are, who are doing spring break without masks or whatever. I don't know. It's a lot of it's a lot of weird feeling about like how people's reactions have changed over time. Like e even the people who I knew who were like so fucking scared of it just like suddenly like a like a switch flipped and just like stopped giving a shit. out here spraying their bacteria on each other like these motherfuckers. This is what it's like going out in the crowd nowadays. <laughs> yeah, I get fucked. <laughs> You're just running around town and then people are just like sneezing and coughing all over the place. It's gross. I'm not a germaphobe, but man, like this... Anything lockdowns like it's it, it as a temporary thing. Like I was definitely temporarily like more wary of people being fucking nasty, and now it's like maybe I'll just be like this forever. <laughs> I've been trained up to become just fucking judgmental of people who don't cover their when they sneeze and shit. <laughs> Yeah, it's fucking gross, man. It was gross before, now, and then it became extra gross, and now even if it's not as gross, I'm still just, like, grossed out by it. Yeah, the remote thing is definitely where I have personally won out, and I am trying not to ever leave my job ever. The thing about growing up and eating a lot of shit sandwiches is that eventually you get something that isn't a shit sandwich and you know not to send that back to the kitchen. Metaphorically. People cough without covering their mouth like they're a two year old, you dole out uppercuts. <laughs> yeah, just fucking, uh. Oh, oh, there we go. Yeah, just fucking shuriken into the ceiling. Thanks. Thank you for the dime anonymous cheerer with the spooky little... What is that? Is that a ghost? Oh, it's a ghost behind a triangle? I think. It's very cute. Much appreciated.
Yeah, if I'm gonna... Okay, if I can vent about the situation one last time just to get it out of my system. I live in, like, one of the richest places on the planet. And, like, people here kind of stopped caring about a year ago. And then over the course of that year, everything kind of, like, slowly opened back up. And, like, now it's kind of become, like, a scapegoat. Where it's like, oh, the... Everyone's... People are... They're demanding, like... Like, the offices are back open, and, like, all the restaurants, like, no one gives a shit anymore. And it's like, no one's really giving a shit, but now it's like, okay, now we can blame, like, the restaurants and shit for everything. And it's like, I think everyone's just kind of, like, entangled, like, this web of, uh, responsibility, you know? Or, like, the people who are mad that, like, they couldn't do COVID restrictions at some, like, some of the, some of the fur cons coming up. And it's like, first of all, everyone, they did all the restrictions they could, and, like, everyone fucking got COVID anyways. And, like, B, it's like, every, like, even the people who are mad about all those, like, lack of restrictions or whatever, still, like, went to all the parties and, like, you know, slobbered all over each other. And it's like... I don't know. People people have wanted institutions to be mad at. References to COVID in the media. Oh, are you wait. First of all, Agent 501, thank you very much for the raid. Then Welcome raiders to the channel. We are doing rebirth ending on hard mode, which means I get to spray everyone with this green spray paint. Also, when you mean like References to COVID in the media. What do you mean by that? We talk about all those sci-fi disaster movies. Sorry, I'm, I like fat fingered my flashlight button. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's the same thing where like uh, no, it's a very like rich person mentality where like you just like set up the institutions to do shitty things and then just blame the institutions for it. But wars and pandemics, I. <laughs> There, there's totally been, uh, like, fucking bargain bin, like, pandemic movies. I don't think there's been any, like, good ones. I think there was one with, uh, oh my god, who's, who's that girl from Princess Diaries? Is that, like, oh, I'm, I'm gonna fuck up her name, it's like, I can't remember. But, like, the dorky chick, right? Yeah, I think she was in one, actually. I think it was more focused on... The isolation and, like, having to interact with people over Zoom and blah blah blah. I don't think it was, like, the straight-up B-movie, like, sci-fi, the, the apocalypse. Is... <laughs> Anne Hathaway! Yeah, thank you! Oh my god. Bless all of you for- like, I, I couldn't- I couldn't make it happen. Yeah, I thought she was in something like that, where it was, like... I don't think it was, like, hyper-focused on... The disease part of the pandemic but still like it played an important part but there's definitely a lot of those like uh you know there movies where that are suddenly about like a a pandemic that's caused like an apocalyptic scenario and you know it's like even if they're not saying oh covid it's like clearly they're making it for that like like they want people to be thinking about that Hi, fan. How's it going? I'm getting a little bit owned, so I'm gonna actually, like, I'm actually playing carefully now and shit. Oh, I need to get the chrism. I said I need to get the uh, okay here. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, there. I think there's been multiple, and I I remember seeing a list somewhere. 
I did mention last stream that I love reading about uh, of reading about movies just as much as watching them. Crappy Anthony Hopkins movie. I don't remember that one, but like, can you get about the red? Yeah, some days, some days be like that. I guess that's another benefit of like not really competing much is that like I just don't even have splits. I just hang out and just do it until Pyramid Head comes and fucks up my whole day. <laughs> I got killed without saving a minute ago, which is why this homeboy wanted to give me the slice. Uh, I want to look it up, but I can't right now. <laughs> I'll do that after this run. We'll do a quick, uh... <laughs> like, 2020 to 2022 movies that are about an unnamed biological disaster that's extremely supposed to be like, uh, like a COVID pandemic reference, but like they refuse to actually call it that. Beowulf. Now that's a movie. I saw that shit in theaters. The naked backflips. I don't remember anything about that movie except for naked backflips and like the weirdest Angelina Jolie like cameo imaginable. I know that's not what we're... <laughs> I don't think that's what you were referring to, but like, I hear Beowulf and just immediately flashbacks. I would approach the Panda X, people getting itchy and falling skin. Oh, I hit the stairs, nice. Yeah, screw this park. Screw this guy in particular. The Beowulf joke in the Chip and Dale show. Wait, do you mean the movie or the show? Or is there a show now? That movie, like, I, I should look up, like, a list of references in that movie because it's like there's so there were so many it was unbelievable it was I couldn't even keep track of it like watching it like every fucking scene had billboards in the backgrounds for other like Disney properties or just random shit it was so funny I actually really liked that movie I watched the shit out of Chippendale when I was a kid so it's like Seeing them do kind of the grown-up thing was very cute. So there's a new show then? I did not know that. Oh! Oh yeah, that was uh... Yeah, that was a character in the movie. I forgot about that guy. Why did that count as running? That's like... I'm swinging a plank around. I'm not at full sprint speed. Whatever. Yeah, you could probably look at it. It was a character in the movie. I think he might have even supposed to be like, he might have been like uh, one of the hobbits from the Hobbit movie or something. I know he was probably like a, just a generic fantasy character with, you know, 
deep in the deepest part of the uncanny valley. Like, you know, like, when we were, we were playing the quarry, it was like, kept saying, like, okay, we're in, like, the far side of the Uncanny Valley, where they're almost, like, almost, like, perfectly realistic, you know, human-looking. Not always, and not, they're not, like, 100%, but, like, it's damn close. Yeah, that, that, uh, that movie was deep in the depths. The Ship and the Old One? I liked it. I thought it was really good. It's definitely, uh, since a lot of it's referential to, like, how the animation industry's changed and, like, there's a lot of references to, like, different, like, old cartoons and blah blah blah. It's definitely, like, for a specific audience's nostalgia and that's not going to be for everyone. 1437. I don't even remember what the other one was. But yeah, I think, like, on a fundamental level, it was good enough that, like, in, like, an objective sense, like, it was a well-written and, you know, it's a good movie. Not everyone on the planet's gonna like it, but... Excuse me, moi? Oh, I'm fucking dumb. <laughs> trying to combine the key with the hook for some reason. I think it was 27. Uh, 37, okay. And the other one was, I think. Dude, I could have sworn. Six ninths, oh my god. Didn't I punch that in? Whatever. I always feel like a cheese ball if I like if I use chat to like help with that. It's just me being a boomer. But yeah, if you were considering watching it, it is very good. What? Shit. I wasn't sure. I was trying to time it with when he looks at it, because I thought that's like when it would activate as an attackable enemy. Oh shit, I'm supposed to do two first. Unskippable elevator cutscene. Boo.
You know what I'm actually super glad about is that, uh... Chip was the 2D one and Dale was the 3D. Because, like, the 2D is a thousand times better. And Chip is also the cool one. I don't know, I'm glad he was, like, like, if the leads were reversed, like, it wouldn't have been as charming to me. But, since, you know, everyone kind of, like, maturing over time, I guess, it's way easier to do for... Oh, don't do that. It's way easier to do that with ship as lead instead of vice versa. Ow. James? James Isaac Neutron! being a 3D model with the 2D cell shading filter. Yeah, it did like, it did look a little different, but I liked it enough. I'm not like a stickler for that. I was glad the movie happened. out of juice. This might be a problem. Come on, come on. Oh, barely. Part scary. Okay, that's what we in the industry call time save. I love how long the active hitbox is on this on this thing. Like you can backswing it at enemies and stuff. Very cool. Find something to smack. I'm always just wary of these walls because in this section of town they park cars all over the place. Well, I guess that's one. Not really. Here's one. Right in the middle of the road. Can you believe that? This one, too. Why are you slapping me? You know I'm right. You know what else is right? <laughs> this subscription alert, which should be going off any second now. For Cyborg Rachel for subscribing for 14 months. Thank you very much for that. It is much appreciated. Enjoy the emotes. I'm waiting for that squeak. It better happen. Come on, alerts. You can do it. <laughs> Thank you for that.
beating up on Gonzales restaurant. There it is. <laughs> it took so long. Hey Rachel, thank you again for the resub. It is much appreciated. Hope you've been good. Beating up. Beating up the town itself. Everyone better get out of my way. Everyone meaning all of these people. You there. Oh, I missed. He's gonna do a drive by. Oh, for sure. Better late squeak than no squeak. Indeed. He is dangerous. He, sometimes the timing doesn't line up. Silent Hill 2 remake where you can actually like knock out the windows and stuff. Like shoot out the, the car windows and stuff like that. Destructible environments. That's what this game needs. Like Limp Biscuit, I just want to break shit. Ah, oh, she see, she got me. You can have one, and then I'm out of here. See, that's what I get. I got my comeuppance. Too quick. <laughs> Doo -doo. Wow, that nurse was like super stuck against a wall. Like, they have a turn radius on them, so she's gonna be there for a while. See, this is what I mean. There's freaking cars parked all over the place. Collect them debris for survival. Silent Hill 2, but with crafting. Shattered memories laying around somewhere. If you've never played it, well, okay, it's a great game. I thought it was a lot of fun. I don't think I would play it with the expectation that it's like a representation of the series as a whole. The writing, maybe. The writing is very, like, Eek Silent Hill. But, uh, I would just keep that in mind that, uh, Like, it's not the same kind of experience as, like, Silent Hill 1 through 3. Like, I would, I would recommend it to anyone in general. For getting into the series, this is definitely a good one. Like, you can just download Silent Hill 2 and look into getting the Enhanced Edition. I'm playing on PC right now, it's great.
I actually played Shatter Memories, like, way before playing the first Silent Hill. <laughs> I don't think it ended up mattering too much. Like... Like, I don't think my experience for either one was, like... A, I don't know. It wasn't a problem. Different about Shatter Memories. Yeah, definitely the, uh... Oops. Dude. Yeah, there's there's no like survival horror gameplay to it. Which is kind of important. No, it's not a prequel to Silent One. That's uh Origins. Which is also definitely not like the best starting point for the series. <laughs> Just because it was made like way after one by a, a different studio. Again, definitely, like, definitely go for it with Shattered Memories. Just, like, don't... If you play it and you're like, oh, I'm never playing a Silent Hill again because this one sucked or whatever, just don't, like, base your judgments on that, you know? Get him? Ah. Oh. Tried to get him through the wall. Oh. Thought that guy was gonna get me. Yeah, it's like it's it's a good experience overall. Oh, you got me. It's crazy how those guys like their midsection like opens up when they spray. It's kind of bizarre looking. I always worry about that one. It takes so much longer to combine items in this game than in 3. I also played Silent Hill 3 before playing 1. Any of them are enjoyable on their own, like they're they all hold up. everyone dizzy. Oh yeah, like, no, optimally, 
Uh, definitely start with one or two. <laughs> I think two is a good like litmus test for like whether or not uh, someone will like the rest of the series. Though, just like it has the gameplay, it has uh, not the same kind of plot, but like. It's just like I feel like if you play two. Then you'll kind of understand whether you're going to want to play 1 and 3. Try Spooky. I'm grinding. Out of my way. You're going to throw up in my chat. <laughs> Well, you're a moderator, so you'll have to clean it up. Out of my way. SSH was the room. Dang. I don't think it's impossible to en like, it's perfectly possible to enjoy the room without, like, the greater lore or anything. Like, I think people put a little too much importance on that sometimes. I mean, I'm biased, because that's what happened in that's how my... Oh, was it the blind? Damn it. Okay. I don't dislike the room. I hate speedrunning it. Still fun to goof off, and the randomizer's cool, and I gotta redo that sometime once it's like stable. Yeah, there's, between the RNG and how I lean operates, there's too much that, like, isn't under your control. That I'm just, like, not a fan of. For, for speedrunning purposes, it's still fun to just run around and goof off. If Downpour had skippable cutscenes, which would put the game at like an hour 20 or something like that. Like that'd be pretty, I would probably replay that a lot more. It's one of the easiest games. Ow, fuck you. Uh oh, he might fucking kill me. Last time you got a good ending in the room. Um, I don't know. I think I did all the PC unlocks fairly recently. Not 10 years ago, maybe like over the last like year or two. <laughs> For another marathon? I don't know. I haven't been thinking about it lately. Uh, I just finished a move like a month ago and it's like, I would have to unpack 
where I would have to, let's see, my Xbox is in a box around here somewhere. I'd have to find a place for it. I guess I can put it under my desk or something. I don't know. It's like, it's just been kind of low priority. But I am, I am <laughs> getting assaulted. <laughs> I don't know. It's it'll it'll happen again. It's just it has to be a rare thing for me just because of how life is. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'm gonna make it work. I could do like a all weird endings marathon or something. I did that bad ending marathon that one time, I think. That was a good idea. That's the other thing. Like, I'm not like really competitive focused at anymore, so I have to, like, keep finding random goofy shit to do to, like, keep it fresh. Which is why I'm doing hard mode rebirth ending New Game Plus right now. One of the reasons I'm so thirsty for a new Silent Hill game, more so than other people, is that, like, a, a new thing to... A new challenge to attempt, you know? Like, no matter what it is, or who makes it, it's like, I'll have to figure out the most difficult thing I can do with it, and then, you know, do it. Oh hell yeah, snacks. Love. I don't like fucking 10 star though. It'll probably, whoops, it'll probably end up happening for, god, maybe three at least. I forget what the criteria is for four. Two and three, one and two really suck though. I think, too, the fact that the the kill distributions are broken just bugs the hell out of me. Like, some, some kill methods, like, just don't work for, like, melee or fighting kills, and you can't tell. So it might just, like, miscategorize some of your kills, and you can't do anything about it. And one, I think the, uh, the aim thing that it does just bugs the shit out of me, so I've never bothered with it. Like, the ratios of kill cut types you have to have is just so bizarre. I think if I understood it a little better, like, if I watched, uh, someone, like, Andy or whoever made, like, I think someone's made, like, a 10-star guide, i go learn more about it, but it's just obnoxious. I already did Origins all accolades, that was my 10-star. Ten, ten
think I just hate the idea because it's like with the with the kills and the the damage restraints and like all this stuff. It's like it forces you to play in a way that is just very sexy, like myself. Nah, it's, it forces you to play in a way that's like not super fun for me. See, like the give me that. The possessed ending in Silent Hill 3 is fun because you just get to kill the shit out of everything and you don't even have to think about anything else. Whereas like 10 star, it's like you have to collect all this crap and you have to worry about damage. Can't use any of the fun weapons. I think there's a quicker door shortcut that I need to fucking I'll always do the last one out of habit, I should look that up. So I can save like a quarter of a second. Oh my god, see like how is that considered like a full run speed? That's ridiculous. Fun tube. Oh. Get the fuck out of my way. <laughs> And stabbed the shit out of me for no reason. Thought that was gonna kill me. Crispy Angela. That sounds like a like a bar drink. Mary? What do you want, James? Some flowers. Flowers? I don't want any damn flowers. Just go home already. Mary, what are you saying? Look, I'm disgusted. I don't deserve. Yeah, f <laughs> fuck your flowers, and then, and then Mary throws a beach ball in James's face. Sprayed. Did it. The old gods haven't left this place. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. Mary. You look so peaceful. Forgive me for waking you. But without you, I just can't go on. I can't live without you, Mary. This town, Silent Hill. The old gods haven't left this place. And they still grant power to those who venerate them. 
power to defy even death. Dude, I love the dialogue there, actually. That line reading is really good. James sounds like a fucking crazy person. bathroom break I might I might continue we'll see
Uh, I'm back. I can do many things fast. But peeing is apparently not one of them. See, when I say... Okay, total damage 305. I wonder how much of that was self-inflicted. With uh, the spray. I'm trying to think. Uh... The damage from the sprays from the spray dudes whose names I can't remember. I believe does five points, and I think nurse swings do twenty. I was slow in the boat. I have I have a proper boat time. I'm f that's fine. If I had, let's see, I think you need 75 each of shooting and fighting enemies, and I think you need, like, I think it's like 200 items or something. Also, you need every single extra item. Sorry, I'm thinking, I'm talking about 10 